Hello and welcome back to part two of the Wookiee Bowcaster build. Before we get into that, I just want to take a minute to thank my subscribers and viewers. I really appreciate you guys watching my builds. It's, it makes it all worth it. It's really fun to see other people appreciate your stuff. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and joining in on the fun. I enjoy it and I'm sure you will too. That being the case, let's get to the build. One of the more distinctive and key parts of the Bowcaster is the scope. And basically it's a scope in the center with two scopes on the side. I don't know what kind of scope they use, but I want to use the stuff I have. And that being the case, I've got the scope that I use for my E11 Blaster. I made some resin copies of it. This was kind of a failed copy. It didn't have, I, I had air bubbles and I didn't have enough resin in there. But I don't throw anything away because you never know what you're going to use it for. So I found one of my better copies. Uh, it had, still has the poor stands on it. And all I've done is gone to the hardware store and gotten spacers. Drilled, drilled holes in the side of it so it's they're even on either side and now all I have to do is take these these are Tasco 4x15 BB gun scopes or whatever and just end up putting one on either side to replicate that look so when it's all together you're gonna it's gonna look something like that and the scope is done so it's coming together in individual components here's the thing I try to be thrifty whenever I source parts the scopes didn't need to be worked so I went to see if I could find some used one somewhere I found an old auction that someone had where they were selling a lot of five of these for like $15. I only needed two, but if I had to buy all five, I'll take all five. I found the place, went down there. They didn't even think they had them anymore, and sure enough, they did have some of them. I told them I needed two. He sold them to me for like $5 a piece. But each one of these scopes comes with two of these ring mounts, and one was good, the other one was broken. So I was going to go just buy new ring mounts, but in order to get, I could buy a brand new whole scope with two ring mounts at Walmart for $8.44 then as opposed to buying the two scope mounts for $10 at an undisclosed other store. Anyway. So sometimes you got to think about that. What are you going to use it for? Are you really going to be wasting your money? So I bought the extra scope. I took one of the, so that way I had two scopes, one mount, and then I've got another scope, brand new in the package, with mount, that I can use for another project, because we all know I'm going to make another blaster. That just goes without saying. Or maybe... I can start with the scope and build the blaster around it. The other thing I wanted to do is have a working trigger. Uh, these, the semblance of a trigger. So all that is is a piece of plastic and a spring and little mounting brackets, little pieces of metal, little pieces of metal that I've just gotten in there to just hold the, the trigger back so once that's all all painted it's just it's not going to make a sound although that's a good start I could put something in there to make it make sounds but that's a good start we're getting really really close to being able to assemble the next thing we need to work on is what we're going to do for the to have the length of the barrel and mount it and then we're we're ready to assemble the whole thing and go from there, so. Pew, pew, 
pew, pew, pew, pew, pew, pew, pew, pew, pew. While you were away, I took the opportunity to go on ahead and take care of some of the incidentals that need to be done. Let's take a look. For one, I've cut out this section, which was quite a chore because the plastic here was as thick as this is. So that's probably about an inch thick. So it was a little bit daunting getting that out of there. I've gone on ahead and enclosed my upper. Uh, I haven't. I, I like the detail that I did here. I haven't decided where I'm going to put detail on the top or not because the scope is going to go on top of this and once it's on there you won't be able to see it. Not really. You'll be able to see it from the side but from the front it, you, it is what it is. We've added a barrel and the barrel is just half inch regular half inch copper tubing and this is a uh, copper tubing joint connector that you would solder two pieces together with. I've painted it. This part is flat black which I like that. This is a metallic black and of course this and this is gunmetal. So the only thing we really have left to do is put our our racquetballs on, paint that up, add our scope, and then detail. There is a this hole here. I have no idea what it's for, but I got to figure out what to do with that. Some kind of accent. Um, now Chewbacca's Chewbacca's bowcaster was a little bit bigger in this section and what they had done was there was a plate there and they had used uh, speaker knobs or guitar knobs or something like that they had just put it on a plate and it was like some kind of adjustment knobs if you look up Wikipedia or something I'm sure it'll tell you what those knobs are for <clears throat> but for our purposes all we really need is accent we're gonna figure that part out but we're going to go on ahead and work on the scope. So, off the scope. I'll see you in a minute. Believe it or not, we're done. That's not true. We have one thing left to do, and that's to attach our our racket balls to the ends. How are we going to do that? We're going to use the JB Weld Clear Weld Epoxy. Here's the thing. 
this stuff stinks to high heaven. This attachment comes on and it it measures out an equal amount through the tube and you squeeze it onto your little paper, mix it up real good and apply it, you're good to go. All I did was took my pliers and twisted off the end and it just stinks oh, to high heaven down here. So I'm going to go on ahead and take this into the garage and mix this up, stick them on there and we'll do our final walkthrough on the blaster. I've added some Greeblies and stuff here and there. And we're done. So um, we'll be back in a mo. Well, folks, we can officially, officially say that we are done. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Hard to believe that the components we used were racket balls and shelf brackets and copper tubing. It just shows you how easily, once you put stuff together in the right way, you get some paint on there, it looks great. Let's go through what we've got going on here. So we've got our two Tasca 4x15 scopes there was one mount on each of those when you buy them you usually get two of these mounts I, I didn't really need two on there that's such a short span so we did that we've got a resin cast of I it's a World War two spotting scope the same one that I used the original one that I used on the e11 blaster this is a cast of it and this actually this part here was on it and I wasn't sure what it was so when I was taking it apart when you screw this little part out there's a little light bulb in there so obviously that's a lamp of some sort it got me intrigued to figure out what that was but putting this original metal part on the re the resin cast gives it a little bit more legitimacy it it came out really really good so I had to do a little bit of greebly hunting, so this piece right here for accent, I should probably have gone back in and put and put some resin and filled the, there's a little gap on either side. I'm okay with that for right now, but that's actually the back end of an X-Wing fighter, uh, copper tubing, and the gauge. Basically, all that is is the cockpit of a TIE fighter that we trimmed down to fit in that hole. Took a piece of styrene. I wanted to come up with some kind of gauge or whatever, so it's just red and uh, green. And the little black line is supposed to be the needle. I debated as to whether I wanted to use, instead of... A needle graph a a bar graph where you would have like the LEDs that went from green to yellow to red but that came that looked really well in that spot for, for, for that round hole that fit on the other side what we did is in an homage to the Chewbacca we put a knob and so that is a knob it's it's a old radio knob uh, might not be able to see it there is like a the the mark it's like a tuning knob for bass and treble on an old radio that right there is actually the leg part of a an at at but it fit well with the rest of the designs i think this kind of mimics that and it's hard to see but there is i put a little graph on there like a little hash mark graph so you can you know turn it up, turn it down, so that turns. The one part I did not discuss was these markings here. So this whole design here is based on the clone trooper blast, the clone trooper commander bath blaster, uh, Rex and Cody, and. To me, that just says very Star Wars. I still need to build that blaster, but that mimics that. And I took a long time trying to figure out, do I want my hash marks to go this way or this way? And 
I chose going that way because that gave it more flow. Some uh, a weapon weaponized version of feng shui, I guess you could call it. But it just all flows for me. I could put a pad on the back. I I'm still toying with that. But other than that, what else is there to say? Oh, and the trigger. Now, I did mess with the trigger a little bit. I really would rather have my trigger set right there. But trying to get the spring, adjusting the spring so it was, it would act, once I got paint on there, it was sticking. So I had to cut the spring and, and try and stretch adjust it. And so it was really tight. So that's why it's, it's pulling all the way back. But again, I can live with it, you know. I'm happy with that. Another thing that I'm very, very happy with in the assembling of this bowcaster is the five minute epoxy I use for the um, balls here, the, the racket balls. I had to fill these up to begin with so that they wouldn't flop down or whatever when I stuck them on. I had trouble filling them with the foam so we ended up filling with resin. Well, once I got it full of resin, then it became a solid ball, which I had to drill out the slot, which kind of put me right back where I was, where I could stick the, the ball on the end of the, the arm, but it, was, it would flop or whatever, and I was concerned over time, maybe the weight of it would do that. That five-minute epoxy just worked wonders. You put it on there and just let it sit, and 20 minutes it felt solid, Yes, R2. And then, now, it's, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's, you know it's not going anywhere. I also used it on the tip of the, the uh, barrel. It's mounted at this end, and I was going to tr try to figure out a way to keep this from wiggling back and forth. I thought about using earth magnets. I didn't want to, I could have easily just drilled the hole all the way through that, but then I would have had a hole to fill, and... I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and try and use the epoxy. And when I, while I had it, did the the uh, racket balls, and I put a little bit on there, and that's solid as well. So, so five extra points for five minutes epoxy. So there you have it, the mediocre modeler bowcaster. It's that time again. It's time for you to go out and build something. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next run. Oh, who goes there? Pew, pew, pew. Thanks again for watching. This was a really fun build. I never thought I'd get to build this one, and it would go as well as it did. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your buddies because we all know everyone's got a Star Wars buddy.